What's going on everybody? In today's video, I have a three in one straight in drill that I'd like you to try. It'll help you see just how straight you can hit a straight in shot, as well as work on your stop shots, follow shots, and draw shots. So let's give this a try. So first, let's talk about the setup. Because to do this drill, you're gonna to wanna to be able to use as much of the table as possible. And that's why I've set up eight reinforcement labels that run from this corner pocket all the way to this corner pocket. And the distance between each of the labels is one diamond length. And on my table, that is 11 and just shy of a quarter of an inch. And the first series of shots that I'm gonna go through is to practice the stop shot. Starting with the easiest shot where the object ball is just one diamond length away from the cue ball. And if you can recall from my natural roll video, this is just gonna require a center cue ball hit so the cue ball can stop right after contacting the one ball. And what I'm really gonna be looking for is that the cue ball does not roll to the left or the right after contacting the one ball so that it shows me that I hit the one ball straight in the face. Now one way to increase the level of difficulty on this shot is to move both the cue ball and the object ball further away from the corner pocket, but keep them at one diamond length apart. Or you can move just the cue ball further away from the object ball. Like in this example shot here, my cue ball is now three diamond lengths away from the object ball and a center cue ball hit will not work. By the time the cue ball reaches the object ball, it will have picked up forward roll and could possibly follow it in and scratch. So I'm gonna need some amount of bottom spin on the cue ball in order to get it to stop right on contact. And depending upon how much bottom spin I actually put on the cue ball, that'll actually determine how hard I hit the cue ball. Because the further down I go on the cue ball, then the softer I can actually hit it because the most important part is right before the cue ball reaches the object ball, the backspin has to die out so the cue ball can slide into the object ball and stop right on contact. Now, as the cue ball gets further away from the object ball, I'm okay if the cue ball slightly rolls to the left or the right. I just don't really want it to move maybe more than a quarter of a diamond. So let's see what I can do with this shot here. I have about a tip and a half below center. Now, once you've tried all the variations of how far away you want the object ball to be from the pocket and how far away you want the cue ball to be from the object ball, try the hardest setting here, which is having the object ball and the cue ball be seven diamond lengths apart and you still want to try to be able to have that cue ball stop right on contact with very little movement or no movement at all. I'll be shooting this with maximum bottom spin. Now I might have made the shot, which is good, but you can see that my cue ball rolled off to one side by a bit. So I didn't hit it as straight as I possibly could. Now let's see if I can hit this one a little bit straighter. Nailed it. Now, when you realize that you've mastered the stop shot, you can use the same exact setup to practice your follow shots. In this first example shot here, we're gonna start with the easiest setting by having the object ball one diamond length away from the corner pocket. 
and the cue ball is only one diamond length away from the object ball. The objective is to make the object ball and have the cue ball follow it in without veering to the left or the right. That way we know how straight we actually hit the object ball. Now, from what we've learned from the stop shot drill, we cannot hit the cue ball with a center ball hit because the cue ball will just stop right on contact. So we're going to have to use some amount of topspin. And like we've also learned from the stop shot drill, depending upon how high I hit on the cue ball, the softer I can actually hit the cue ball. But for a simple shot like this, we're just going to use about one tip of topspin and hit the cue ball rather softly. So let's see how this goes. Now, just like with the stop shot drill, you can gradually increase the level of difficulty by moving both the object ball and the cue ball further away from the corner pocket. You can then further increase the level of difficulty by moving the cue ball further away from the object ball. As in this example shot here, my object ball is now three diamond links away from the corner pocket, and my cue ball is also three diamond links away from the object ball. So let's see how straight I can hit this shot. Now in an actual game, you're not going to want the cue ball to follow into the pocket after the object ball because that's going to be a scratch. So one variation that you can do to this drill is try to control how far you want that cue ball to roll after making contact with the object ball. So now using the same example shot as before, I now want to pocket the five ball into the corner pocket and have the cue ball roll forward by at least two diamond links so I can have decent position on the six ball. Got it. And lastly, for the follow shot drill, let's see how well I can do with what I believe to be the hardest setting, where the object ball is four diamond links away from the corner pocket, and the cue ball is four diamond links away from the object ball. And the objective is to have the cue ball roll straight through and scratch after the object ball. Now my cue ball did roll slightly off to the left, but I can live with that accuracy. Now once you're done with the follow shot drill, you can wrap everything up with what I believe to be one of the hardest aspects of controlling the cue ball, and that's drawing the cue ball. Because you have to understand that every time you hit that cue ball, it naturally wants to go forward. And to draw the cue ball backwards means that you're trying to make the cue ball go in an unnatural path, which is a lot harder to control. And that's why we're going to start this section off with what I believe to be the easiest setting where the cue ball is only one diamond length away from the corner pocket and the object ball is one diamond length away from the cue ball. Because making the object ball into the opposite corner pocket really isn't all that difficult. The difficult part is getting the cue ball to go forward and then traveling twice the distance backwards in order to fall into the corner pocket, hopefully in a straight line. And then just like with the stop shot drill, varying amounts of bottom spin helps us determine how hard we're actually going to hit the cue ball. And for each one of these shots, I am going to be trying to use maximum draw. Now to gradually increase the level of difficulty for this part of the drill, 
move both the cue ball and the object ball further away from the corner pocket. And then to increase the difficulty more, put some distance between the cue ball and the object ball. So in this example shot here, my cue ball is three diamond links away from the object ball, and it's five diamond links away from the corner pocket. So I'm going to have to hit this cue ball rather hard if I want the cue ball to travel forward three diamond links and then backwards eight diamond links for a total of 11, which is just over 10 feet. And I'm going to tell you right now that the harder I start to hit this cue ball, the less accurate I start to become. So I'm going to be really surprised if I can actually get the cue ball to draw straight back. But let's see what I can do. I almost drew it straight back into the corner pocket, but I can live with that result. And to wrap things up, let's try a draw shot at its most difficult setting, where the cue ball and the object ball are seven diamond lengths apart. So this cue ball is going to be traveling a total of 15 diamond lengths when you include the diamond length between the cue ball and the corner pocket, which is roughly over 14 feet. And I can tell you right now that my stroke is not powerful enough to be able to execute this kind of shot and be accurate at the same time. But for you all, I'm going to give it a try. And I'm only going to use this one camera angle so that way I can focus on staying down on the shot and delivering as much power as I can into my stroke. So as you can see, I can at least draw the cue ball, but my accuracy needs a lot more work. And that's going to do it for this three-in-one straight-in drill. Now I hope that you're going to be able to find this drill useful, because unless you're jumping the cue ball or massing the cue ball, you're always having to deliver the cue ball straight. And as I have found out, and I've seen many of other players, when they shoot a shot, they think they're as lined up as straight as they should be, only to find out that they weren't. And hopefully this drill here will help straighten that out. So let me know what you think about in the comment section below. And if you're able to execute each of the hardest settings for the stop shot, follow shot, and draw shot, then make a recording and publish it. And be sure to tag me so I can see and everyone else can see how straight you can actually shoot. So if you like what you saw, give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Take care, everybody.